Hi everyone, so I wanted to make this lecture for you because we were not going to be able to meet, so I just wanted to make this lecture. This is actually based on the reading that we had um, on Canvas. I'm going to point out major points here, so it can also help you when you take your, your final for your notes, okay? So <clears throat> we're going to be looking into the overview of fitness and what it means about fitness. Like, you know, what is fitness? So in terms of like, when you hear the word fitness, what does it come to your mind? Like, okay, it might come to your mind like, okay, being healthy might relate something with your body, right? Having a healthy body, having a healthy mind. Yes, it's actually related to your body and it's related to your health. So it's actually, um, if you look in the dictionary, it's actually, it's actually means that it's related to the condition of being physically fit and healthy. Well, what does that mean, right? Having a physical fit and healthy body. Well, it's related to the absence of disease. Um, not being able to be sick, right? Like if you have a chronic disease like diabetes, you don't have a physical fit body. Or right now with what's going on with the situation with the virus, you know, if you don't have, um, if you're sick, you don't have a physical fit body. It's also related to stress. You know, if you're completely stressed, you are not going to have a good physical fit body and you're going to be more exposed of getting sick and, and having disease. Um, it's also related to activities of daily living. So like your daily life, like walking around, uh, you know, going up the stairs. Like if you're going up the stairs to the second floor and you're getting out of breath, that's actually not a good sign. That's actually might indicate that there might be something going on and you might not have physical fit and healthy body. So it is related to your body. And when we talk about a physical fit body, we talk about what's called the five components of fitness. So we have five components and we look into this five, which is cardiorespiratory fitness, uh, resistance training, flexibility, balance, core strength and flexibility um sorry this one is core strength not because already discussed flexibility so we have five which is cardiorespiratory fitness resistance training flexibility balance and core strength <clears throat> sometimes we can also see it as cardiorespiratory fitness resist uh, muscular strength muscular endurance flexibility uh, balance and body composition but we are going to focus with what the reading says, and the reading talks about these five components, okay? So let's look into each one of them. So cardiorespiratory fitness. Well, what does that mean? Well, it has to do with your heart. Cardio means heart, and I have a little picture here for you for the heart. It's a healthy heart, and it's related to the heart, but not just the heart, but your cardiovascular system. So your heart's job is to be able to pump blood. Why does it pump blood? Because blood carries oxygen and we actually need oxygen to live. If you don't breathe, eventually we will die. Okay, so our cells need oxygen because that's how we create energy. Actually, we create uh, what we have, what's called in a chemical process is a chemical, it's called ATP, but we're not going to get into detail with that. But to be able to produce ATP, we need oxygen. So we breathe oxygen through our nose and it's transported through the circulatory, uh, actually transported to, through the um, pulmonary system, the nasal, right? And then it goes through your lungs and then it diffuses in the blood with the viola and then it's gonna be transported to your heart. So when your heart pumps, it carries blood so it can deliver to your whole body. So when we look into cardiovascular fitness, cardiorespiratory cardiovascular is the same thing it relates to how efficiently your heart and your lungs are able to deliver oxygen to the working muscles now this is also related for a prolonged period of time so your heart your circulatory system your lungs being able to effectively deliver oxygen when needed okay to the working muscles to your legs um, when it's needed so why is this so important Cardiorespiratory fitness, having a good cardio fitness, and actually you guys did this when you performed your assessment at the beginning of the semester. We did actually remember the either the walking test or the running test, and that was assessing your cardio fitness. So if we tend to have a low cardio fitness levels, that might mean that can put us at risk 
of what we discussed at the beginning, chronic disease, not having a physical fit body. So we want to make sure that we watch that and we have a, a good aerobic fitness. And what are the benefits? Like I mentioned before, a prevention of chronic disease, chronic disease such as heart disease, diabetes, um, some kind of cancers. The number one killer in the United States is heart disease. And it's actually due to lifestyle. So it actually can, can be prevented if we eat healthy, if we exercise. Exercise is a very, very important thing to do that is going to really help us with prevention of chronic disease, specifically cardio exercise. Cardio exercise is going to improve your cardio fitness. Okay, So prevention of chronic disease is going to increase years, add years to your life because again, if you have a, a good, healthy heart, you're going to be able to live longer. You're not going to get heart disease. You're going to be able to have a better quality of life. It can also lower your blood pressure. And again, that's also related to the circulatory system. It will reduce your stress levels. Um, it's actually, you know, psychologically has a lot of effects psychologically. And you have another video that you have to watch. Um, some of you might have watched it already uh, or started watching it. It relates to the psychological aspects of car uh, of cardio exercise, in particularly. So it's just amazing. It helps you with your stress, and you probably have helped felt this. Um, you know, after you exercise, you feel good. You feel like you have more energy, and that brings to the next one, which is increasing energy. Uh, it it also helps you with your self esteem. It helps you sleep better. So there are so many benefits of cardio exercise and cardio. You know, just having a good cardio fitness. Again, the activities, what are you going to do to improve your cardio fitness? Well, what are considered cardio activities? We have running, we have Zumba, we have kickboxing, we have swimming. Anything that is going to increase your heart rate and you're going to feel it. You're going to know when you're doing cardio exercise. Okay? Now, let's look into the next component, which is resistance training. Resistance training involves challenging your muscles against the external force or external resistance or external load. Uh, and it's going to improve your muscular endurance, your muscular mass, uh, and strength. So usually what happens is we're working on external resistance. Like, for example, when you're lifting weights, the external resistance is going to be the dumbbells. And that's what you're lifting. That's, that's what you're doing. In order to lift that, like, 10-pound dumbbell, you need to push against that load and lift it. The same thing when you're doing push-ups. What is going to be your resistance, right? When you're going down, it's going to be you. You are the the, the force. You are the your body weight. It's going to be the external load. Now, um, the benefits for resistance training are going to be important. Also, it's going to help us to uh, control our weight in terms of like you know if we're trying to lose weight. If we increase because by us working. At, um, it gains external load, external resistance. It's going to help us tone our muscles and also help us increase the size of our muscles. And now with more muscle mass, you're actually going to be more metabolic active, which is going to actually help you burn more calories. And you are going to be able to also help you to lose weight. So that's why we say helping you to control weight. It also helps you with your balance. Like, for example, if you have upper body strength, good chest muscles, strength, and back strength, you're going to start standing up right and not going to hinge like this or hunch back, right? And also going to help you with your balance because now you're going to be more stable. So it improves your balance. It also is going to help prevent uh, low back pain, uh, injuries on the low back pain that are very common, very popular. You have a good strength, uh, muscular strength, and core strength, that's going to help you prevent lower back pain. It also is going to help you with your mood, your stamina, your energy. It's going to help you how to feel more energetic. And a lot of people like to lift weights because it helps them to look strong, to look, to look buff. A lot of guys like to do that. So benefits are important for resistance training, but please keep in mind that the benefits that you get with cardio exercise are not the same that with resistance training. So this means that just because you're lifting weights, you are not lowering your risk of chronic disease. So you can still have high blood pressure if you're, lift, you're still lifting weights. What do you need to do? You need to do cardio. Cardio is going to help you with lowering your chances um, 
of chronic disease is really going to have a significant effect. And I'm not just saying that because I love cardio, but it's because the research shows that. Okay. So of all the five, if I have, if I'm going to make you pick one, I would say make sure that you do your cardio exercise and mix it out with some push-ups, some squats, some weights, but make sure that you're doing your cardio. Okay, this is why the ACSM, which is the American College of Sports Medicine, recommends for everyone to do most days of the week, five days per week, 30 minutes of cardio. Let's move on to the next one, flexibility. Flexibility relates to range of motion of a joint. This is a joint, elbow joint. It bone connects bone to bone. So it relates to the range of motion that a joint has. So for example, Let's say my range of motion on my elbow, it goes from here to here, right? But let's say I have an injury and now I'm just going here. I'm going to be prevented with my range of motion. And that's related with flexibility. So benefits of flexibility, it's going to help you reducing uh, low back pain. It's going to help you with your digestion too. Uh, increase risk of injury in terms of like, sometimes when we get very tight, we can pull muscles. So it can help you release, uh, I'm sorry, prevent uh, injury improves your coordination too like a lot of times when you're doing yoga you're working on your flexibility and also a little bit of balance so it helps you with that what kind of activities are going to be helping you with flexibility well yoga and just stretching again if you do yoga i think it's a great thing but remember to get the benefits of cardiovascular um, effects meaning prevention of chronic disease you need to make sure that you do cardio now let's look into the next one, which is balance. Balance has to do, has to do with keeping your body position in a place without falling. Okay. Now, why balance is going to be important because it's going to help us prevent falls. Now we are young. We don't really care about falling because it really doesn't happen to us. It probably, if we ever trip or fall is because we were distracted, but this happens a lot with seniors. So seniors have problems with balance. So we want to help them improve their balance. So enough. And for us, it's also important. So it's going to help us also improve our posture and coordination. When you have good balance, also it's going to help you. Everything is going to be connected. So you, you have muscular strength, muscular endurance, and you're working your core. It's going to help you with a good posture and also going to help you with your balance. Exercises or activities, well, you get to do balance exercises when you do yoga, when you do Pilates, when you're balancing one leg, any kind of exercise you're balancing one leg, like in kickboxing, you're kicking and balancing one leg. Or even like when we do, when we, when, if you dance Zumba, we do, we do it in, well, in our class with my Zumba students, we do it in Zumba or my kickboxing students when we're doing the kick, kicking, right? But for Zumba, um, yeah, like there are some exercises that we're doing and balancing one leg, okay? So core strength and, flexi and stability, not flexibility, core strength and stability. So core strength. Actually, your core is made of your abdominals, your front abdominals, and your lower back. This is your core. So core is going to be beneficial for your posture, prevention of also low back injuries. And what are you going to do here for your core? Well, like that's a great exercise, which is the plank. It works your lower, your lower back and your front abdominals. It's going to help with your posture. So it's going to be very important. So those are the five components of, of physical fit body. Now let's move on to the next slide. And it really talks about baseline measurements. And what are those? Assessments. This is actually what we did at the beginning of the semester. Remember, we did the walking test or the running test. We also got you weighted. We did your BMI or um, for actually my, my class that did the BMI. And then also, you know, we got the, the weight, the scale, we got you weighted. So those are what we call baseline measurements. Those are at the beginning. We did at the beginning and we're also going to do it at the end of the semester. So why? Why do we do these measurements? Well, we want to make sure that we measure and we know where we are in terms of like our goals. So we want to figure it out how are we doing? Are we are are we getting the results that we want? Is the problem working? Can we reassess? So it's just pretty much letting us know if we're getting closer to our goal. So they are very important. Now, the next slide talks about the fit principle. The fit principle relates to um, it's an acronym that is stands for frequency, intensity, time, type, and enjoyment. 
It's these are guidelines that we follow and each of the components of fitness are going to follow this fit principle. So for example, cardiovascular exercise, the fit principle says that we need to exercise for cardio five days per week, most days of the week, anything between three to five days, intensity and moderate intensity, time, which is at least 30 minutes, 30 to 60 minutes, type cardio, such as running or Zumba, um, enjoyment will be make sure that you pick something that you like. So each of the components of fitness are going to be based on the fit principle. We focus mainly on cardio because that's kind of what the main activity for us is. And now the last slide that I'm going to discuss, it talks about the principles of exercise training. So these are just like how your body works. For example, we have the principle of specificity. This means that all what it was that what the word says a specific training and specific results for example if you want to run a marathon what do you need to do you need to run you're not going to be doing yoga so your body will adapt to whatever it is the activity that you do on a regular basis again if we want to improve in our cardio endurance we need to do cardio the principle of reversibility relates to use it or lose it so this means that if you don't use it, you're gonna lose it. So you can be working out so hard and you get all the benefits and then you stop for like two weeks and then you lose it. And this is what's happening with this break right now too. We, we gotta continue to exercise and we gotta keep on moving. The principle of overload relates to overloading the muscles. So for the body to make changes and get it stronger, we need to put the muscles, uh, push them against the sternal load. For example, when you're lifting weights, by you trying to lift those 10 pound weights, you're overloading the muscle to lift that weight, which relates to progression. Because once the more you overload it, once you're overloading by lifting those 10 pound weight and doing the basic course, the more you do it, your body will get used to, will adapt, and we need to progress. This is the rate at which we apply overload. So we need to constantly challenge the body. We need to progressively prepare the body so it adapts. So we constantly have to ad adapt and become stronger. Always challenge the body so changes uh, still continue to happen. Okay? I hope this presentation helped you, and let me know if you have any questions. Okay? Bye.